Hey, mathematicians, welcome back. Here is our target for the day. I can solve two step word problems. Now this should be extra practice from the work that you did yesterday and you are getting so familiar with one step word problems that hopefully an extra day of practice with two step word problems will really help you out today. Remember these steps that we walked through in school, they're similar to the ones you practiced yesterday. So you use whichever ones work for you. If you need to come back to this to help you when you're working through your math, make sure you come back to this. It's a great option to help you. With two step word problems, we're gonna follow these same steps, write two equations and solve one equation at a time. It's really important that we only solve one equation at a time so that we don't get mixed up. All right, here we go, mathematicians. Get ready to practice with me. Lynn gets $38 for babysitting. She spends 12 on the present for her mother and puts the rest in a money jar. She then gives some money to her sister. Now she has 18. How many dollars did Lynn give her sister? Let's go back. Reread the problem next. Then we're going to underline the question this time. Lynn gets $38 for babysitting. She spends $12 on a present for her mother and puts the rest in a money jar. She then gives some money to her sister. Now she has $18. How many dollars did Lynn give her sister? So we wanna figure out that final question of how many dollars did she give her sister? If we go back again, we're going to box the keywords and circle the key numbers. Box the keywords and circle the key numbers. So Lynn gets $38 for babysitting. 38 seems important and she gets it. So that's adding to what she has. She spends, well, what does spends tell you? That's a key word. Look back here, spends, if she's taking away, looking at how many are left. That's right, spends is taking away, it's subtraction. She spends 12 on a present for her mother and puts the rest in a money jar. That seems like that's our first step mathematician. So let's look at that together. If she earns $38 for babysitting and she spends 12, does that look like that will be our first equation? That's right. Whatever is left is what's going into her money jar. So this sum, this answer that we're figuring out, I'm sorry, it's not a sum, it's a subtraction. This answer we're figuring out is the money that goes in her jar. Then we're going to take this answer and use it for our next equation. So let's keep reading. She then, this is how we know it's two steps. She then, it's her next step, gives some money to her sister. So she starts with the money that she has in her jar, gives some to her sister. We're not sure how much she gives to her sister. Now, how many dollars? Oh, and now she has 18 left. So in the end, we know she has $18 left. If we have two unknowns here, we cannot figure it out with at least having one of these filled in for us. So if we look back here again, remember, oops, I get my right. We're going to write an equation and solve one equation at a time. If we solve the first one, that will give us the clues we need for our second one. So here we go, let's give it a try. 38 minus 12, going to solve for that here and then use that to do our second step or our second equation. So this will be our first equation and this will be our second equation. Now mathematicians, you have several ways with several strategies you know that we could find this answer here. You know what my go-to strategy is. I have 38 and because I'm taking away, I have to put it on the right so that I can jump to the left. How much am I taking away? That's right, I'm taking away $12.
So I'm going to decompose that 12 into a 10 and a two because those are really friendly numbers to work with, right? We always wanna make it easy and efficient on our brains. So if I take away $10 first, you can do your base 10 drawing at the same time if it helps you. 10, 20, 30, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take away a 10, how much do I have left? 10, 20, and the same amount of ones, eight. 28, so my ones are the same and I have one less 10. I took away my 10, now I have how much left to take away? That's right, two. So what's two less than 28? I hope you've been practicing your forward and backward counting. Two less than 28, that's right, it's 26 mathematicians. What is 38 minus 12? Now that we know Lynn had $26 after she spent 12 on a present for her mother, we're gonna use what she has left, the money she put in her jar, because now she gives some money to her sister. She has 26, she gives some to her sister, and after she gives some to her sister, we know she has 18 left. So here we go, mathematicians. 26 minus something, she has 18 left. Hmm, how could we do it? Let's try expanded method this time. 26 minus, oh, nope, that won't work because I have to solve for my unknown. Well, because I know fact families or math mountains work together the way that they do, I'm trying to solve for 26, 18, looking for this unknown. Well, I know 18 plus the unknown is 26. So if I take 26 minus the unknown is 18, or I could flip it and I could do 26 minus the 18 will give me the unknown. Aha! So now I can do that with the expanded method. 26 minus the 18 we know she's left with will give us how much she spent. All right, now in expanded method, remember you're expanding it out, stretching it out into place values. So 26 would be stretched out into 20 and 6. 18 would be expanded out into what, mathematicians? That's right, 10 and 8. All right, here we go. Can you take 8 away from 6? You sure can't. So you're going to ungroup this 20, take a 10 from it to put in the 1's place, so I now have 10 left. Now can I do 16 minus 8? Absolutely. I know 8 plus 8 is 16, and that's a double. And since we know that addition and subtraction are opposite, if I do 16 minus 8, I'll be left with 8. Look at that. And now if I do 10 minus 10, what is that? So how many dollars did Lynn give her sister? That's right, $8. I can also picture it in my head. I saw it in my head really quickly by just thinking about grabbing onto friendly numbers. If I know I wanna get up to 26 because that's the total I had and I'm ending with 18, I'm looking for the distance or the difference between these two numbers. Two more gets me to 20 and that's a really friendly number. And then if you look at the ones place, Six more gets you to 26. So the difference between 18 and 26 total is six plus two. That's right, it's eight. So mathematicians, how many dollars did Lynn give her sister? That's right, we found out she gave her sister eight dollars. So on your workbook page, you would write the eight here, and then what's our label here? What are we talking about? Skittles, puppies, toy cars. Nope, that's right, dollars. Or you could do a dollar symbol before the eight if that's what's helpful to you. Nice work, mathematicians. 
If that's helpful to you, go ahead and move on. If that was tricky, I want you to pause, rewind it, and then try and do it yourself on a scratch piece of paper alongside me. Okay, here we go. We are going to... Okay, mathematicians, now I want you to try this one before I do it alongside you. Russell has 28 marbles. Ridge has 12 fewer. Ding, 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 ding. Fewer is a key word. He has 12 fewer marbles than Russell. Natasha has as many marbles as Russell and Ridge together. How many marbles does Natasha have? I want you to pause the video and grab a piece of paper if you don't already have one. I want you, as I reread it, to see if you can identify the key words, the key numbers, and the two equations that you are going to solve. Here we go. Russell has 28 marbles. Ridge has 12 fewer marbles than Russell. Natasha has as many marbles as Russell and Ridge together. How many marbles does Natasha have? So Russell has 28 and Ridge is Russell's 28 minus 12 because he has 12 fewer. So what's our first step going to be? Here's what I wrote. Nice work. Ridge has the 28 Russell also has minus 12 because his is 12 fewer than Russell's start. So that's our first step. What's your second step going to be, mathematicians? Natasha has as many marbles as Russell and Ridge together. So we already know Russell has 28. plus however many we find out for Ridge. So plus this same unknown that we're solving for. That will give us Natasha's total. All right, pause the video now and see if you can figure that out, mathematicians. Solve this equation first, show your thinking, then take what you learned from there to solve the second equation. Okay, let's check your thinking, mathematicians. Here we go. My first equation was Ridge, and so to figure out how many marbles Ridge has, I'm gonna take Russell's 28 and subtract 12. Russell's 28 because Ridge has 12 fewer, so subtract 12. Pause the video at any time if you need to, if it feels like it's going too fast. I'm going to decompose 12 into two friendly numbers that I feel really comfortable working with, 10 and two. If I jump back one whole 10, I'm not touching my ones, but I'm taking away a 10. That's right, we have 18. I jumped back 10 from the 12, now I need to jump back two more. Nicely done. So we figured out Ridge has 16 marbles. And then we read that Natasha has as many marbles as both the boys together. Together's our key word that tells us we are adding. So if I add Ridge plus Russell, we just figured out Russell is 16, we'll be able to find Natasha's. I'm going to use a different strategy. I'm just going to combine my tens and my ones. What's six plus eight, mathematicians? Six plus six is 12, that's a double, and then two more in that eight. That's right, that's 14. Now add your tens. 30 plus 14. 30, jump up another 10 from the 14 is 40, plus four more ones. How many marbles does Natasha have? Nice, 44 marbles. So make sure when you write that in your answer, you write 44 and you write out the word marbles for the label. Way to go, mathematicians. Here's another way you could show your thinking. We know Russell had 28 marbles and Ridge had 12 fewer. So take Russell's total 28 minus that 12 and what you have left here will tell you how many Russell has left. It's just another way to visualize it and picture it.
Then we used what we knew to solve for Natasha. Okay, mathematicians, you have a couple of options here. So to practice your thinking, you can pause the video now. You can look at these three problems and work through them showing your thinking and doing your very best. You can work through workbook pages 212. You can also access these workbook pages on Google Classroom. So if you go to your single sign on, click on Google Classroom, instead of clicking on our regular MetaAlert Classroom where you've been answering our weekly question, go ahead and click on the second grade math. Then you click on classwork. Go to the section that says unit four subtraction and click right here. That is all the workbook pages from this unit. So see if you can find page 212 there. If you want extra practice, you can also do 211. Or you can go back to pausing the video here. Or your third option is work through pages 133 and 134 in your homework book. So you have lots of choices. Choice one, go to our math Google Classroom, access the practice pages for all of unit four in our math second grade Google Classroom. Find page 211 and 212. You only have to do 212, 211 is extra practice. Or pause it here, write on a scratch paper, or your third option are these pages in your homework book that you already have at home. Do what works best for you. If you need to hear those directions again, rewind the video. Your teachers would love to see your thinking posted on Seesaw. We can't wait to see how hard you're working. Way to go, mathematicians. Keep it up.